Math 1314, Tyler Jr. College, Section 1.5, Quadratic Equations, Video 3 of 10. In the previous video, I accidentally, and I promise you it was an accident, I wish I could take credit for it because in retrospect, it was a beautiful transition from solving by factoring to a different technique. But in the previous video, we wound up with the equation x squared plus 49 equal to zero. We tried to solve it by factoring and it failed because if you limit yourself to real numbers, this won't factor. And by the way, I keep saying that because it will factor, but not if you limit yourself to real numbers. Challenge dropped. So how do you solve it? Well, you'll notice that I've got a lot of things on the board except how to do this. Now, by the time you're watching this video, it will be on YouTube. And the title will say what we're about to do. Don't look at it. I know I shouldn't have said that. Because I want this to organically develop, not just cram it down your throat like a lot of math teachers do with their topics. Well, let's talk about solving x squared minus 49 is equal to 0. Now, we solved that in the previous video. We solved it by factoring. And in case you didn't see that video, x squared minus 49, being a difference of squares, factors into x minus 7 and x plus 7. So we set each factor equal to 0. And when we solved, we got two solutions. We got 7 and we got negative 7. So we already know what the solution is. But what I would like to do is use this equation to try to build a different technique that gets us the same solutions, a technique that we can apply to this equation. You may already know this technique. Because you should know what the essence of solving an equation is. It's goal-oriented, and what's the goal? Uh, loosely speaking, the goal is to get the x by itself, figure out what it equals. So, if I want to get this x by itself, can't I start by adding 49 to both sides? And get x squared is equal to 49? That gets me closer to my objective of getting the x by itself, except I still have the square on it. So what can I do to get rid of the square? In the first series of videos about complex numbers, I kind of hinted that I was going to show you a technique and refine it. Here it comes. If I want to get rid of a square on one side of an equation, I can square root both sides. The square root of x squared equals the square root of 49. As a consequence, the square cancels the square root, or rather the square root cancels the square. And so we have the x by itself. On the right side, we have the square root of 49. Well, you should know that's 7. But do you see a problem with this technique? With isolating the x squared, square rooting both sides, and then canceling the square. What did we get for our solution? 7. But what were the solutions according to the previous video? 7 and negative 7. So we lost a solution. Fair not, we can recover it. How do we recover the negative 7 that just was not there? Well, it's part of the process that I'm going to show here. Oh, by the way, well, let's finish this. It's part of the process I'm going to show in just a second. But when you square root both sides of an equation, you have to use a plus minus. Let me say that again. If you square root both sides of an equation, that's when you bring out a plus minus. Not when you're just arbitrarily doing a square root. If you were just walking down the street and you said, oh, look, there's a square root of 49 on the ground, that's equal to 7. Why? It was a pre-existing square root, and its answer is 7. Don't believe me? Ask your calculator. It knows. But if you have an equation that didn't have square roots, and you decided to break out a square root on both sides, that's the time to use a plus minus. And that will give us both of our answers. So let's fill in all the missing things on the board. This section is solving quadratic equations using square roots. Now, in order to build this how to solve using square roots list, or rather I should say procedure, there is an asterisk here, I'll probably elaborate on the asterisk in a moment. Uh, let's see, it's going to have one, two, three, four steps, just like everything else. In order to do this, 
I need to introduce you to another principle. Now, when we solve the equations by factoring, we took advantage of something called the zero uh, product principle. Yeah, zero product principle. For this technique, we're going to take advantage of a principle called the square root principle, appropriately enough. And it goes something like this. If you have an x squared and it is equal to a number, let's just say it's equal to a, for lack of a better number, then x is equal to plus or minus the square root of a. So essentially it's saying, go ahead and square root both sides, but don't forget the plus minus. Don't forget the plus minus. Don't forget the plus minus. Easiest thing to, to mess up in this type of problem. So what are our steps? Well, let's see if we can categorize what happened. Why did we add 49 in the beginning? There's a lot of ways to answer that, but one way to answer it is we needed to isolate the squared term, and that's the first step. I should say, if necessary, isolate the squared term. Because there will be some problems where it is already isolated, so you can go to step two. By squared term, I mean whatever has the square on it. In this case, the square belongs to the x. So that's the squared term that we isolated. And once we isolated, then we took the square, take the square root of both sides of the equation. Let's take the square root of both sides of the equation. Now, as a consequence of that, two things happened. Number one, which is step three, cancel the square. Actually, step three has two parts to it, so I'm going to put a semicolon. Cancel the square, use plus minus. And typically, you use plus minus on the other side. So whichever side the square was on, on you can use plus minus on the other side. It's not wrong to use it on the left, but I'm trying to isolate the x, and sticking a plus minus on it is counterproductive. So what's the fourth step? Well, the fourth step hasn't been necessary yet in this example or the next one, but I'll go ahead and let you in on it. The fourth step is, if necessary, finish solving. I'll show you an example in a moment where it is necessary because we won't be done after using the square root. But let's see if we can solve this one. Solve x squared plus 49 is equal to 0. Well, here's the x squared, here's the squared term, so let's isolate it by subtracting 49 from both sides. And we get x squared equals negative 49. Okay, step one done. Step two, take the square root of both sides of the equation. Step three actually has two steps. On the left, cancel the square. And on the right, use a plus minus. And really, I should follow that by saying use plus minus and simplify. I'll put the word simplify here. Because you don't just stick a plus minus on it. You should try to do the square root. Do you know the square root of negative 49? It's not 7. It's not negative 7 either. The square root of negative 49 is 7i. If you don't remember that, go back and watch the uh, video series on section 1.4, Complex Numbers, specifically the first video and the last video. And at this point, we're done because it says x equals. There's no, there's no finished solving. So what's an example of a problem that requires more work after this step? I will show you multiple examples in the next video.